grace and peace be multiplied to you today in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is how Peter opens his second epistle, and it is a very beautiful and fitting opening. I hope that you are continuing in reading and studying Peter's two epistles and that you are applying his teachings, thereby living the word. Today, we will cover chapters 1 through 3 of 2 Peter. Remember that 1 Peter primarily encourages believers facing opposition, and he gives us some directives in how to live a godly life in the midst of a very worldly culture. Now, the second epistle of Peter warns believers against false teachers, even within their own fellowships, which could lead them into apostasy. The main concern is how to remain steadfast in growing in the knowledge of the Lord, which is not an intellectual knowledge, but an actual experiential knowledge in the living of life that results in moral transformation. Peter is very clear that so-called teachers that exhibit a sensuous lifestyle are not exhibiting authentic Christianity. They may talk the talk, but they are not walking the walk. So how about you and me? It's good to ask ourselves these kind of questions and have a checkup with the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth and helps us to honestly examine ourselves in the light of scripture. Paul tells us that the basis of true knowledge is the scriptures. We must read and study the scriptures for ourselves and not just rely on teachers. Remember the Bereans in the book of Acts who searched the scriptures to test if what the apostle Paul said was true. We must do the same. Then we can correctly divide the word of truth. Let me just take a little detour here. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, we must be careful to guard against any form of deception. We must remember that Holy Spirit will not reveal something contrary to God's word. Now, Jesus did say that the Holy Spirit is our teacher, but he teaches us by the word of God as we study and meditate on it. Holy Spirit brings understanding and revelation, but he will never say something contrary to God's word. We must be careful not to attribute things to Holy Spirit that are actually our own flesh, our own emotions, or our own thoughts talking to us. Let's not be lazy Christians expecting only our pastors and teachers to feed us or for the Lord to download the Bible into our brains. I trust you understand what I'm saying here. Now, as we move on, Peter is clear that there is a judgment coming for the unrighteous and false teachers. It is a place of everlasting darkness and not a place we would want to go to. Peter speaks about the day of the Lord, the day of judgment, and this is a day we will all face, believers and unbelievers. For believers, our salvation is secured. But I ask you this, is a believer simply someone who gives verbal and mental assent that Jesus is the Son of God? Or is a believer someone who lives according to Jesus' teachings? I'll let you answer that one for yourself. Regardless, all will face the judgment unbelievers to eternal fire, but then how should we as believers live? For we too will be, judged. will be judged. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 9 through 17 speak to this. Remember how 1 Peter talks about us being a royal priesthood, a holy nation being built up into a spiritual house or a temple. The verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 confirm this. We are God's building, and we are to build on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ, by how we live our lives. Our works will be revealed by fire. If they burn up because we have built with wood, straw, and hay, they will burn up, 
although we will still be saved. But if we have built with gold, silver, and precious stones, we will receive a reward. So there is some kind of reward system in heaven. Now let's leave, to, leave it to the Lord and how he manages that, trusting and knowing that he is the just one. For me, the bottom line is that I want to present something of worth to the Lord because he is worthy and he is faithful. Peter tells us to be diligent in making our calling and election sure and tells us to add to our faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Wow, that's quite a list, isn't it? Now, can we do this on our own? Absolutely not. We must rely on God's great and precious promises and the empowerment of Holy Spirit. Our own flesh cannot work up these virtues. Peter asks a question about what manner of persons are we to be? And he answers by saying we're to be holy in conduct and godliness. Now that is something astounding here. He then says, this hastens the return of the Lord. My goodness, that's kind of incredible to ponder. Now remember that in the book of Ephesians, it tells us that the church that will be, will be presented to Jesus as his bride will be a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, and that she will be holy and without blemish. Could it be that the Lord's return has been delayed because of the state of the church? Hmm, something to ponder, I think. But as we await his return, we can be assured that he is long-suffering towards us because he is not willing that anyone should perish, but rather that all should come to repentance. Praise the Lord. And as we look for his return, Peter exhorts us to remain steadfast and to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is my prayer for you and for myself as well as we close our time together. May we remain steadfast and continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now you can check out other studies that we have done at Living the Word on our website, godconferences.com. Until next time, peace and joy.